This video is a little lesson on normalized data and the standard normal curve. For instance, if we have um, some bar graphs here that represents grades, then um, this could be the uh, C grade. This would be, you know, people that got B's, and this would be people that got A's, and over here would be D's and F's. And this is pretty much how a um, class will go. Most of the class will get C's. Um, D's and B's usually are about the same, but I couldn't get my per picture perfect. And then there's a few A's and a few F's included. Now, what happens with a normalized data is if you break these up into smaller groups, like some colleges have C minuses, C's, and C pluses, so we could break each one of these bar graphs into three pieces, we'd get something that looks more like this over here. So um, in the middle here, this could be like the C's, and then over here would be the C minuses and the C pluses. Then you'd have your B minuses, your B's, your B pluses, your A minuses, and your A's. And you'll notice that as we break them into smaller groups, that they start conforming to this curve, um, which we're going to call the normal curve. So eventually we would get these curves. This one would be like for grades. And you'll notice that someplace in here in the middle would be your uh, mean grade. And then you'd have some certain standard deviation pushing it up further. And there's maximum of 4.0. So here in the middle would be your mean. And if this was normalized, your median would also be here. And your mode. So if you have normalized data, these three things have to be exactly the same or really, really close to each other. Um, this is another um, graph of a normalized data, and this would be something like men's heights. So this would be the average men's height, about 69 inches, and 50% of the population would be shorter than 59 inches for men, and 50% of them would be taller um, than 69 inches. So be normalized. A lot of things are normal in um, statistics. The width of your hand, the length of your arm, um, IQ scores. Uh, if you have a very large class, um, the scores on a, a standardized test. Um, things like that. What we need to do, though, um, is to pull away from having separate graphs for each situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this X bar to be a specific value, um, 0. And then we'll just move up as um, standard deviation. So one standard deviation above the mean, two, and then three. So we're going to get a picture that looks something like this, a little bit more elongated. You see that zero here, this is going to represent our mean. And then this one is going to represent our mean plus one standard deviation. And then this would be plus two standard deviations. And this would be three standard deviations. And then back here, we would go x bar minus one standard deviation, whatever that would have been. All right, and we can tell a lot of information just from this. This is what's called a standard normal curve. We take whatever the mean is up here, and we just associate it with zero. And the same thing with this mean over here. We're going to just associate it with zero, and then use the standard deviations to create this number line. All right, there's some facts that's known about this standard normal curve. And one of those facts is a 65, 95, 99.7 rule. Don't forget that the whole curve is 100%. So I put the 100 there at the end. Uh, a lot of people think it's just the first three numbers. And what this rule states is, if you start at your um, mean and you move one standard deviation in both directions, a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right, that the people or the things that land in this one standard deviation away from the mean contain about 68% of the population. So if you're talking about all the men in the world, 68% of them would be um, within one standard deviation of the mean of, what was it, uh, 69 inches. If you move two standard deviations away from the mean in both directions, positively and negatively, you'll contain about 95% of the people, the data, whatever you want to call it, in between two standard deviations away from the mean. And then if you move three standard deviations, now notice I had to move the graph up a little bit here, uh, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see where it stops. It's stopping at three. And if we move three standard deviations away from the mean in both directions, 
we're going to contain 99.7% of all the people or all the data or all the scores should be within three standard deviations of the mean. Now if you go on forever, and this graph does go forever in both directions, then you're talking about that 100%. Thing. So for instance, we have a study has found a mean number of bananas that an adult will eat per year was 14 with a standard deviation of 3. So the 14 is your mean and your standard deviation is 3. So on a number line you're just going to put uh, 14 in the middle here. And then you're just going to count up standard deviations. So if I go one standard deviation away from the mean that would be 14 plus 3 which would be 17. Another 3 would bring me up to 20. Another 3 would bring me to 23. Now if I go backwards, um, take away 3, we'll be at 11. Take away another 3 and we'll be at 8. Take away another 3 and we will be at 5. And we want to know what is the percentage of adults that eat between 17 and 20 bananas. All right, so you look at 17 to 20, which would be these people in here. And I want to know what percent about um, would be within those two bounds. All right, so the only things I know is this is my X bar, it's smack dab in the middle. And if I move um, one standard deviation away from the mean in both directions, half that way, half that way, this is going to contain 68% of the data. Well, that's not helping me, but it gives me at least the same endpoint as the uh, 17 here. And if I go two standard deviations away from the mean, let's see, orange, that would take me from here, whoops, to here. It's not a very good line. Let's cheat. That would take me from here to here. That's going to contain 95% uh, of the information. Now this little red line is the same percentage as it is on this side over here. And if you look at this, the 68, if you subtract it away from the 95, is going to leave this little leg over here and this little piece over here. I only want one of the pieces. This red one here matches up with that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract these two numbers. So I'm going to take 95, I'm going to subtract 68, and I'm going to take my answer and divide by 2. And this tells us that there are 13.5% of adults that would eat about 17 to 20 bananas per year. Alright, how about another example? Same idea, um, the banana uh, with a mean of 14 and a standard deviation of 3 and still using this nice 68, 95, 99.7 rule. And what I want to know is what percentage of adults eat less than 5 bananas. So we can mark this up really quickly. Here's uh, 14, this would be 17, this would be 20, this would be 23. We're just counting up by um, the standard deviation and now counting down and there's the five that this problem is talking about. So we're looking for the percentage of adults that eat less than five bananas per year. All right, so if we look at uh, the percentages, if we go two standard deviations away from the mean, that would bring me to here. And if we go three standard deviations away from the mean, that would take me from here to here. Now the green one is not involved here because it's not touching the end of this red line here. So we're not going to use the 95%. The one that touches it is the 99.71. So we have to use this 99.7 because it's touching it. But this is going on forever. And the last thing that goes on forever in both directions is 100%. So this problem is going to be answered by taking 100, the whole normal curve, subtract 99.7, and divide by 2. And we're going to get 
0.15%. Don't change that to 15%. Um, it's actually just 0.15%. So a very, very small percentage of adults will eat less than five bananas per year based on this study. And that's it.